You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. In this episode, I'd like to share with you a really interesting idea that I came across recently. It's an idea that was first clearly stated by a French writer called Benjamin Constant, who was a 19th century liberal, classical liberal in France and at the beginning of the 19th century, just after the French Revolution. And he lived through the French Revolution and he had experienced the terror, the period after the revolution when they had um, mass executions of many, many people. Um, first of all, the nobility, but then afterwards, lots of political executions. And the whole thing just got really out of hand. This revolution, that I think Benjamin Constant initially looked on as a very positive development, had become incredibly violent. And he wanted to understand what went wrong and what the ideas were behind the period of the terror after the French Revolution and why the French revolutionaries had become so violent and murderous when they initially were all about liberty and, and freedom. So Benjamin Constant came up this, with this idea, or this argument, that there are two very different concepts of freedom, two distinct ideas of what freedom is. And he presented these ideas in a, I think it was a, a speech, but later got published as a book called The Liberty of the Ancients and the Moderns. And I will put a link in the show notes because you can find this online easily for free. And I want to share it with you because I, I think it's a really interesting way of understanding how people think very differently about the concepts of freedom or liberty and why you can find very contradictory ideas about what liberty is. And he suggested that you can understand two different ideas of liberty, an ancient version of what liberty is and a modern version of what liberty is. So the ancient idea of liberty, which comes from the ancient world, classical Greece and societies around during that time, this idea is that freedom or liberty is the liberty to take part in the social power of the state, participation in politics, basically. And what Benjamin Constant was saying was that in ancient times, when you had societies that were involved in incessant warfare, they were constantly fighting with each other, and you also had slave-owning societies, ancient Greece, of course, was a slave-owning society, then this concept of liberty was to be one of the citizens who, ha who were not slaves, but who actually had a stake in the political life. They got a chance to be involved in making decisions about essentially who to go and fight, uh, who to make war on, and all the other kinds of decisions that are involved in politics. So this ancient idea of liberty is that you're not free unless you have a part, a say in the state and in the political system. And freedom means to be a citizen with a direct participation in the state, either through voting or through some other means where you and your fellow citizens all decide on what the state's policies should be. So Constant says that is the ancient idea of liberty. And the modern idea of liberty is completely different. The modern idea, which really started with the Enlightenment, is, is a concept of liberty which is about being free to do your own thing. It's personal freedom. It's the idea of having the security to enjoy your own personal choices and choose your own way. And rather than be participating in the state, this idea is to be free from the state. So the way that Constant puts it is for each to be subject to nothing but the laws, not to be arrested, nor imprisoned, nor put to death, nor mistreated in any way, or as a consequence of the arbitrary will of one or more individuals. And this is the concept of liberty that we associate with freedom of speech, freedom of contract, freedom of association, freedom of religion, freedom to have property and to choose what you want to do with it. Constance says, it is for each the right to speak his opinion, to choose his line of work and to practice it, to dispose of his property, and even to abuse it, to go, to come without obtaining permission or giving account of his motives or undertakings. It is for each the right to join with other individuals, whether to confer on his interests or to profess the religion that he and his associates prefer, or simply to fill his days and hours in ways more fitted to his inclinations and his fantasies. 
So this is a very individualist idea of liberty that comes from the Enlightenment. And these two different concepts of liberty, the ancient and the modern, have massively different implications. Because what Benjamin Constant pointed out is that the ancient idea of liberty is one that demands total subordination of the individual to the community or the state. It's one that prioritizes the decisions of the collective over the choices of the individual. Whereas the modern concept of liberty is all about protecting the individual and allowing the individual to make their own plans. And as long as those plans don't impact on anyone else's rights, for them to be free to, to do whatever they want. I think this is a really interesting and useful way of thinking about freedom or liberty and thinking about the different way that people talk about it and think about it. Because what we now have is two radically different philosophies of freedom. There's the collectivist one, the ancient one, which is still around today. And Benjamin Constant makes the point in his article that one of the really important philosophers behind this line of thinking was Jean-Jacques Rousseau and his concept of the social contract. Because he actually explicitly stated that in order to be free, in his concept, everyone has to entirely give up and totally subordinate themselves to the state. And Jean-Jacques Rousseau actually wrote a constitution for Corsica, which included a provision where citizens had to say that they, gave, they give themselves entirely to the state. Because that's the only way that that ancient concept of liberty can work. You know, you can only make decisions as, as a collective, if you like, if you all give up your individual rights and your individual choices, and you basically go with whatever the collective decides. So the ancient concept of liberty demands complete subordination to the collective. And, and Rousseau was one of the main philosophers behind that idea. And in contrast to that, the modern concept of liberty can be seen in, in totally different philosophers. And one of the most important was John Locke. Apparently, Bertrand Russell once said that after John Locke and Jean-Jacques Rousseau, all philosophers have either been in either Locke's camp or in Rousseau's camp in one way or another. You know, you can see all of philosophy in, in these two lines of thought. And these different lines of thought are fundamentally about a difference in view of what freedom really means, of what liberty really means. Does liberty mean having membership of a collective and as part of that membership giving up your individual rights? Or does it mean the freedom of the individual from coercion from others, the freedom to just go and live your life as long as you, you don't hurt anyone else? And as I'm sure is totally obvious from this podcast, my philosophy is very much in the modern concept of liberty, in the enlightenment concept of the freedom of the individual to pursue happiness in their own way as long as they respect the rights of others. And I'm totally skeptical of the ancient concept of liberty. But I find it really useful to see these two different worldviews, these two different ideas of liberty in this way that Benjamin Constant suggested, because you can really see people expressing one or the other view. And ultimately, you can't really hold both views in your head at once. If you want to be consistent, you'll end up going more towards one or more towards the other. But I wanted to share that idea with you because I think it's a really interesting idea and one that can help make sense of a lot of confusing, conflicting ideas about what it means to be free and what liberty means. And one that you can use to kind of filter ideas that you hear and think of when someone talks about liberty. Are they talking about the ancient version or the modern version? So I hope you find that interesting. Love to hear your thoughts. That's all for this week. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.